Without a proper telescope mount, instead of our night sky looking sharp and well centered in the middle of our screen, it would gradually become glowing streaky lines across either our camera, phone, or laptop screen. Why? because our night sky is consistently moving and changing, which surprisingly is something that not a lot of people are aware of. In order to take long exposures, which is a requirement for astrophotography, you need a telescope mount that can actually handle the weight of your telescope. But how do you choose your mount? In order for you to choose your first mount, you first need to know what exactly it is that you're looking for in a mount. If you're on a low budget and only plan on using a really lightweight refractor or perhaps just a DSLR camera with the telephoto lens, you can simply invest in a star tracker. A simple, cheap, and easy to use motor driven device that tracks the movement of the night sky. The two best known sky trackers have to be the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i and the iOptron Skyguider Pro. One thing that personally stood out to me about the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i is the fact that it has an integrated dithering system. This allows for easier processing and much cleaner images. Again, like in the previous episode, all products mentioned will be included and linked in the description of this video. And on the way there, please make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to support the channel. Star trackers are much more budget friendly than your average go-to mount systems, but they do lack something that is not necessarily required, but definitely recommended for astrophotography. The Astro Go-To System. How does this system work? These systems are recommended by the majority of astrophotographers because it allows for the quick, easy, and accurate location of virtually any deep sky object. Each deep sky object and star in the sky has its own coordinates. And after the mount is calibrated using the coordinates of several different stars, it can accurately point your telescope in the direction of any coordinates that you input. Of course, these mounts are far more expensive than star trackers, but their abilities makes the price far worthwhile. There are several types of go-to astrophotography mounts. Harmonic mounts, equatorial mounts, altazimuth mounts, and fork mounts. Which one should you choose? Generally, unless you purchase an EQ wedge, altazimuth mounts and fork mounts limit the amount of exposure time you're able to get within each sub-exposure, which can greatly affect your final image. However, they do generally cost less. For example, if you're not planning on using a heavy telescope, you can try out the Skywatcher AZ GTI mount. This particular unit costs about $400, about the same price as your average star tracker system, but is able to be controlled via app or through the ZWO ASI Air, when, as mentioned, used with an EQ mount. Fork mounts are generally not sold apart from the telescope since they are built into the telescope body itself. How about harmonic drive mounts? Well, these styles of astrophotography mounts are generally more expensive, but there's a good reason for that. This style of mount is able to carry between three and four times its own weight. These telescope mounts have no backlash and have high precision, allowing for cleaner and longer sub-exposures, greatly enhancing the quality of your final image. They're also far more portable due to the fact that they don't require counterweights, meaning that you have less equipment that you'd have to haul around. The best quality harmonic mounts would have to be the ZWO AM5N and the AM3. Also, the Skywatcher Wave 100i mount. Let's talk about the most common style of mounts now, the equatorial mount. These mounts do in fact require counterweight shafts and counterweights. And like the harmonic mount, they're able to track equatorially, allowing for longer sub-exposures, creating a greater contrast between your favorite deep sky object and the night sky. These mounts vary within the price range, and the lowest can go to about $400 to $700. For example, the Skywatcher GTI mount is a super portable, super affordable equatorial mount with a weight capacity of 11 pounds. This is probably the most recommendable mount that I can mention to you as a beginner working within a budget. But if you have a higher budget, I definitely recommend the Skywatcher EQM35 or one of the Celestron AVX mount series. But when choosing your mount, no matter what kind of mount that you want to get, you have to pay attention to one thing, and it is the most important thing when choosing one. You have to pay attention to the weight capacity. I have to emphasize again, that is the most important detail. If your telescope weight passes the capacity of your mount, you could get elongated stars, or you could even damage the gears or the machinery that's actually working inside of the mount itself, essentially making it useless. 
When calculating the weight of your telescope, make sure that you include all accessories, whether you're using an onboard computer like the ZWO ASI Air, find your scope, any cameras you might be using, any reducers you might be using, make sure that you include all of that uh, in the weight of your telescope. Before you click the buy button, always make sure you do your research, read your reviews, reach out to the Cloudy Nights forum to see what your fellow astrophotographers have to say about the mount that you're interested in. But believe it or not, there's actually one kind of telescope that doesn't require a mount for astroimaging. What could that be? Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and find out on the next episode of Beginner's Guide to Astrophotography.